Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety with the IAR embedded workbench for ARM. Now I could have given this demonstration with any ARM device that's supported by the IAR embedded workbench, but the one I've got connected to my laptop at the moment is an XMC to go. This is a Cortex M0 device. Now, this is IR embedded workbench, and inside here I've created this simple project which I've called the cache register. The first thing I've done is I've configured it so that it's going to work with the device which is the Infineon XMC to go, and I've also configured the debugger to be a JLink. In order to be able to control the debugger from LDRay, I've told the debugger to use a macro that will be generated from LDRay and I've told it here to use that particular macro. Let's go and build this and execute it. So I'm just building it and now let's execute it. And just because I've executed it, this will then generate a cspy.bat file that we'll use in order to be able to control the execution from LDRay. So let's just go and execute this. And as we can see, it's printing output. So I can actually control this cache register by typing in these various commands. Let's do S for start. Let's enter a barcode, 12345B. Let's do E for end, and it prints out a list of products. Right, let's do a Q for quit, and that should exit. Good, so that's the project that I've got. So the first thing I want to be able to do is to analyze this code and see is it compliant to MISRA. Then I'd like to be able to execute the code just like I, I've done and find out, well, how much of this code have we exercised? And then I'd like to be able to complement the coverage by using some, doing some unit testing. So let's go and open the LDRA launcher. And I'm going to go and run the build import. So here, the build import, I want to basically build my project from a batch file, and I want to listen to what happens as I perform the build. So this is now performing the build using the IR build. We can see we've generated an executable. We have a list of all the source files. We have a list of the include paths and also some processor symbols. So we have everything we need now in order to be able to analyze this code. So I could now open this with TB Vision and start analyzing it. But to save time, I've already analyzed the code and here we can see we have the, the analysis results. So let's take a look and see, is this code compliant to MISRA in this particular case? It is, we have no violations. Why is that? Well, let's take a look and see, have I excluded any violations? And yes, there are some violations, not very many, but a few that have been excluded. How has that been done? Well, let's double click, and that takes me to the appropriate place inside the code, and here I've used stdio.h, and that's not allowed in MISRA. But here I put in my justification to say, well, I've added this just so I can demonstrate this and it prints something out. So that's a way of justifying violations is by putting that elder exclude tag into the code. Let's take a look at a code review report. And the code review report is saying this is compliant. And if I scroll down, I should be able to come to all the places where I've got my justifications. And again, I can navigate to the appropriate descriptions. Good, so my code is, is compliant to MISRA. What about the quality of the code? Let's take a look at that. Let's go and look at a system call graph. And the system call graph, we can put this into a, a number of various different modes. So we could put it into a mode where, well, for the moment, we can see all the functions, how they're interconnected and color coded to show us in blue function pointers. Well, we don't have any, but in green, we can see the system calls. Let's take a look at a few of maybe that gives us an idea of maintainability. And here we can see we're measuring a number of metrics on the code. I can sort and rapidly find the most complex function, inter user interface pass. Well, let's view that as a flow graph. And here we're going to get a graphic representation of the code. If I click on this particular block of code, we can see that corresponds to the switch over here. If I click on this particular block of code, it corresponds to this block on the flow graph. Now, what I'd like to be able to do now is actually to execute this code just like we did earlier and find out, well, how much of the code have we actually exercised? 
So let's perform the dynamic analysis. So this is going to go and instrument the source code and it's going to now build it using the IR build. It's now executing it using that auto-generated uh, cspy.bat file. And we can now control the execution just like we did before. S for start, one, two, three, four, five, B. E for end, and now we'll do a Q for quit. And that stops, uploads the results. And now we should be able to find out, well, how much of that code have we actually exercised? So once again, let's go and take a look at a system call graph. And this time we can put this call graph into a coverage view where we can see in green where we have 100% coverage and in red where we haven't yet got 100% coverage. We can sort and we can see some functions for which we've got no coverage at all. So we've never removed a product. Well, I could execute a second time and remove a product and effectively increase the coverage. Before we do that, let's take a look maybe at uh, the generate ticket function. Let's go and view that as a flow graph. And now we can see very clearly in green the blocks of code we've executed. And here we have a block of code we've never executed. We've never had, looks like, an offer equal to no offer. And we have another branch here that again has not been executed. That's the branch from here to there. All right, let's execute the code a second time and see can we increase the coverage. So once more, I'm going to simply press the button there to perform the dynamic analysis. This is now running again. And let's do an S for start. Let's add a product. Let's remove it. OK, uh, let's remove it with C. I made that wrong. Let's do it again. S for start, a product, C for cancel. That's better. Uh, let's do some random shopping. That should get generators lots of coverage. And let's do a, an E for end and a Q for, for quit. And that should have increased the, the coverage. So let's go and see the combined coverage. So this time, let's take a look at a test manager report. And the test manager report shows us what we've got so far. So code review, very good. Quality, very good. And here we have some pluses indicating we've just increased the coverage. So let's take a look at the cache register.c. And we've had two runs. The code's not in version, under version control, otherwise we'd be able to see the, the version number here. And scrolling down, we can see we've got some pluses indicating we've just increased the coverage for Generate Ticket. So on the first run, we didn't execute these lines of code. On the second run, we have executed those lines of code. And so we now have the full coverage for this particular function. Looks like we probably don't have the full branch coverage but that we can we can maybe complement using the unit testing tool. OK, so let's go and maybe complement the coverage using the unit testing tool tbrun. So I'm going to go and invoke tbrun. And inside tbrun, I'm going to go and test a particular function, a particular file. So let's go and open a sequence that I previously created. And I've created one here for the user interface class file. So let's open that. And we can see we have 24 test cases. So we've stubbed various functions that are missing. We've got various inputs and expected outputs. Let's just go and execute this and we'll check this runs. So that's now executing on the target. We're capturing the output. The debugger is a little slow, which is why we can see that's struggling to print out the information. But eventually this is going to finish and we should be able to find that all our tests have executed and we should find we have increased coverage for this file user interface pass. OK, so that's now finished. We can see all the tests have passed and we should now be able to take a look at the coverage for the user interface pass function. And <clears throat> we now have 100% statement coverage, branch decision coverage and MCDC. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can work with IR Embedded Workbench for ARM. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.